What's going on y'all? It's your boy Cool Colas here and you are now tuning into a new video on my channel. But before we get on to the topic for today, I would love for you to do a few things for me. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button so that you're subscribed to my channel. Hit the share button so that you can share this video with your friends, family, and anybody else who you believe will like the topic for today. Hit the bell icon so that you get notifications for whenever I come out with new content on this channel. And when you are finished watching this video, leave me a comment below. That way I can get back to it when all is said and done with this topic. For today's topic, I want to talk about Pan-Africanism, but specifically my thoughts around modern day Pan-Africanism and why I have mixed feelings around the concept. So for those of you all who are unaware of what Pan-Africanism is about and what it means, it is basically about advocating for the unity of black people all across the diaspora, whether they are from Africa, whether they are from a Latinx country, whether they are from the Caribbeans or whether they are from America, that being foundational black Americans. So in theory, this concept makes sense. And this is something that I support. And I do stand in solidarity with my African, Caribbean and Latinx or Lat Latino, Latina brothers and sisters in the diaspora. So there's definitely no argument there. As a matter of fact, the one thing that I take away from pan-Africanism that aligns very directly with what I talk about in my channel is the idea of pro-blackness, which is that we put black people first. And I think that's why a lot of people say be one, because the whole idea and the thing that they take away from pan-Africanism is the idea of putting black people at the forefront in every single regard. And that's something that I wholeheartedly support as somebody who was pro-black. I believe that we should put black people first in every regard and in every single uh, area of activity that humans exist in. But I do think that we really need to dive deep into some of the other issues. And one of the biggest issues that I have with the concept of Pan-Africanism isn't necessarily the theory itself, but the mindset of some Pan-Africanists. And when I say some, I mean a great majority of Pan-Africanists. The problem that I have with the mindset of a lot of modern day Pan-Africanists is that a lot of it is rooted in hypocrisy. And a lot of the comments and arguments that they make are also rooted in making straw man arguments and making a lot of red herrings. And I want to kind of go into what I mean by that. A lot of modern day Pan-Africanists love to browbeat, be disrespectful and to hyper criticize foundational black Americans. And they love to put all of their focus, attention and criticism into what happens with foundational black Americans in origin and in the present. And I think that the way that they go about it is very disrespectful and it is also counterproductive to the whole idea of us being unified and respecting one another. And so one of the problems that I have is that they love to project the idea that we are miscellaneous Africans who do not know what part of Africa that we come from. The reality is, is that this argument is typically made because they are trying to basically demonize foundational black Americans who embrace their culture in America. And they often think that it's funny or that it's a joke whenever we bring up where we are from in America, such as um, for me personally, I'm a foundational black American, but my lineage goes back to uh, Mississippi and North Carolina. As far as I know, it may go back to other places for sure. But what I know is that a lot of my family comes from Mississippi and North Carolina. If I were to say that to some people who are Pan-Africanists, when I say some, I mean quite a bit, then they would think that that concept is funny because they think that I'm removing myself from my African culture, which that goes into a straw man argument, which is that they're making the assumption that I am not embracing the fact that I have African DNA, which I do. I absolutely do have African DNA. I mean, you can see that I'm a very melanated being, right? But the problem is, is that when I sit there and I claim my culture being part of America, then I should not be demonized for that. And the reason why I feel that way is because my people built America. The slaves who were black, who were in America before white people, the Europeans that is, got there and colonized them and took their land and took all the stuff that they had and stripped them of their culture. Those are the people who built America. And by claiming my culture, I'm honoring the things that they have done. That doesn't mean that I am distancing myself from being 
African genetically. It means that I'm claiming my culture because of what has been stripped from me. So in other words, I think the argument typically gets made that we're not really embracing Africa. And I don't really think that that's the case. Now, obviously, I can't speak for every foundational black American, but the majority of people that I know embrace that we have African DNA. But we're what we're also saying is that we have a culture that is in America based off of the fact that our family actually built America up to what it is today because it was built on slave labor. Let's be honest here. I think we also have a very vast lineage. And I think to ignore that is to ignore all of the great things that we've created. I mean, think about all the inventions that we've made. Think about all the leaders that we have. Think about the things that we made in music, like the innovations and things like that. All the strides that we made athletically. We have so many accolades. It would be asinine, totally asinine to just ignore all that just because somebody feels that my culture is something that I should not celebrate because what they're doing is they're conflating this idea of my ancestors and what they built with what white America stole and saying that this is what America is. No, there's two different things. There's the America that my family built and then there is the America that was taken by white supremacy. So I think that that often leads to straw man arguments such as we don't embrace our African culture when a lot of us have already embraced our African DNA. And there's also this argument out there that we try to remove ourselves from African culture. But I would also challenge that as well, too, because I would look back and say anytime there is a Juneteenth celebration or something on a black history on Black History Month or something on a black holiday, the first thing that we're doing is wearing red, black, and green. Although we don't have to, and although we can do a red, white, and blue, because once again, we are Americans, because we are from America as natives. We do celebrate Pan-African concepts when we are showing these colors all the time, because you see that red, black, and green quite a bit whenever there is a black holiday. So it's as, it's as if we're honoring everything that we do as something that comes or it has originated from Africa. So we do it all the time, even though we really don't have to. So I don't think that we're removed from it. If anything, I think we heavily embrace it. And we have always supported our African brothers and sisters when they have restaurants and businesses and things like that. So I think that the thing is, is that we get held underneath a microscope because of the fact that we're trying to say that we claim our American heritage. But Here's the problem with that. Nobody does that with Caribbeans or people who are Latinx. Nobody says, oh, if you're claiming the Jamaican flag or if you're claiming the Cuban flag and that type of thing that you are not really embracing your African heritage. They only do it when it is somebody who is a black American. So I have a problem with that. The other thing that I see a lot is I see the, the red herring that's being made quite a bit, which is that whenever foundational black Americans address issues with people in the diaspora coming over to America and cooning. They start talking about how we fail to address the Hispanics who do the same thing. We fail to address the European immigrants that do the same thing. We fail to address the Asians that do the same thing. And I'm just going to say something so we can just burst the bubble of all pan-Africanists who believe this bullshit like it actually makes sense. A tether is a tether and we will call it a tether no matter where they come from whether they come from Africa whether they come from Jamaica whether they come from anywhere in Asia we are going to call out a tether so I don't like that argument because it doesn't address the point which is that we're talking about people who are from the diaspora who come over here cooning see we as foundational black Americans have this desire to respect the soil that we stand on. So when we go to other people's turfs, even if they're non-black, we respect where we are at. And we expect that same thing from our African brothers and sisters. Now, this is not to make the assumption that every single African or Caribbean person who comes over to America gets to cooning. But what we're saying is that there are too many that do. And when we address the ones that do, we are then made to seem like we are othering or being divisive. And that's the problem that I have. See, context is key. Context is key in every single thing that you do. And when you start conflating things that are totally different, then that's when you start getting into these arguments that don't make any sense in straw man arguments, as I said, because what often happens is we as foundational black Americans get criticized for calling out the 
Africans and the Caribbeans who don't respect the soil when they are walking amongst foundational black Americans. They're disrespecting us. They, they're making claims about what we are and are not owed when it comes to reparations and things like that. And they love to try to, to also um, take some of the things that we've invented and the things that we actually created and say that they were a part of it or they did it totally. So that to me is very disrespectful. And we call those things out because we're so accustomed to calling out our own coons and our own sambos who come out and do the same thing to us. And the problem is, is that a lot of these Pan-Africanists, they need to be calling out those people who are in the diaspora who are doing these activities. But the problem is that they don't. So they wait for us as foundational black Americans to do it and then call us divisive because we're not allowing any riffraff in no matter what it looks like. Another thing that Pan-Africanists who believe in these things that I'm talking about and make these arguments fail to realize is that any concept of unity has to have a code of conduct and a set of rules. What that means is that we have to have a code or a set standard that says that we are going to work together amongst each other and we are not going to betray each other. And whenever we have unity amongst one another, it is not going to be a one-sided ordeal. And if someone breaches that, then they need to be called out. They need to be exposed. They need to be excommunicated from the community as a whole. So what foundational black Americans are good at doing is exposing the individuals who break this code. And what happens is that a lot of these people from the diaspora who come over to a America, what they do is they break the code all the time and we call them out. So what some of these Pan-Africanists like to do is to try to conflate that issue with the idea that we are hating, disrespecting, or showing some type of disunity with our brothers and sisters. So in other words, we're supposed to accept them no matter what they do. And I totally disagree with that concept and think it is folly and just some bullshit. And to be honest, all Pan-Africanists who say these things, they know it's some bullshit as well, too. So that's a problem. The other thing, too, that I find to be problematic is that some of these Pan-Africanists who have these ideals, when they come over to America, what they typically well, you can be a Pan-Africanist and you can actually be FBA, so let me not say that. What a lot of Pan-Africanists do when it comes to defending the coons, the tethers who are in the diaspora is what they typically like to do is make it seem like it's okay to make bootstrap talking points sometimes. So you get to the point where they start talking like white supremacists as if they're better or as if they um, are there's nothing wrong with disrespecting foundational black Americans in their own homeland. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Sometimes you will have Africans or Caribbeans that will come over to America and talk about how they're now in the land of opportunity. So they'll talk about how a lot of us need to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps, especially when we get to talking about reparations or race-based issues or things like that. And then what we Specifically, a lot of people in new black media will go back and say is, well, if you have that spirit of ambition, go get it popping in your homeland. That's what a lot of us say. And so people will think that that's frustrating or triggering or disrespectful to say, but it's not. And I'm going to tell you why, because if you have that spirit when you come over here. And you talk about how anything can happen. You can you uh, it's, it's all about the work that you put in and your mindset and all this other stuff. So my point is, why couldn't you have that same mentality back where you lived at and stayed there? You wanted to come here to reap the benefits of the things that my ancestors have built. And the reason why that's also disrespectful is you're making it seem like the foundation of black Americans who are struggling over here are struggling because they're lazy. So you're ignoring the whole past of what has happened with systemic racism. You're ignoring the past of what has happened with slavery. You're ignoring the past of what has happened about our wealth being snatched, about the fact that everything that we did was built off of slave labor and we were never paid for it. You're um, ignoring the fact that there is a long history of us being undermined. And no matter what we do, there is a white supremacist who always sabotages it. Even we built up black Wall Streets and they were torn down and they were destroyed. So you ignore all that and just say, you niggas are just lazy and y'all just can't get it popping. So you all are not really pointing to all of those different factors because it's better for you to just say that the ones in modern day are being lazy without looking at all the residual effects. So to me, that sounds like you're actually making the talking points that a lot of these intellectual white supremacists are making, such as the Ben Shapiro's and the Jordan Peterson's and all those little um, 
you know, white supremacists that either talk real fast or talk in these strange ass European voices to try to sound smart. A lot of the points that they try to make, you're making those same points as well, too. So that's why I always say, well, if you have that energy to say that we're not doing what we need to do over here and that's why we're not popping, what's going on in Haiti? What's going on in Ghana? What's going on in Nigeria that you can't stay there and make everything pop off while you're there? I would also say, why is it that when foundational black Americans go over to places like Africa and they're trying to buy land and they're trying to buy real estate and they're trying to make a home there, why are they scammed? Why do their homes come up destroyed? Why do they have to go into this process where they're stolen from? Like, why do they have to come over with a bag? Why can't we just have some type of channel or some type of unity where we're able to basically go to each other's places and we're able to do that for free and to build with one another so we can build some type of unified land? That's because the whole idea here is that there is a concept of looking down upon foundational black Americans as if they are not real Africans. Now, I want to be real. Not all Pan-Africanists think this way and not all people in the diaspora think this way because I think this conversation is quickly going from me talking about Pan-Africanists to people in the diaspora. So that's not what I'm trying to do. All I'm simply saying is that Pan-Africanists defend the people who think like this that are in the diaspora a lot of times. Not all the time, but a lot of times. And I think that that's something that obviously needs to be addressed. And we delineate because we see all of these issues. But unless you talk to somebody who can really break it down and make it very clear and concise, then what you're going to get is a bunch of people who are going to snap on you in the foundational black American community because we're used to roasting. That's our thing. So if you're going to come around here and you're going to be disrespectful, that's the first thing that we're going to see. You're not going to see somebody like me who's going to sit down and break down what the real issues are and the problems that we see. Now, again, I want to state this once more. There can be foundational black Americans who are pan-Africanists. There are tons of foundational black Americans who are pan-Africanists. I totally am not ignoring that as a fact. But what I am simply saying is that we need to look at some of the mentalities of modern day pan-Africanism. I think that we can have unity, but in order for us to have unity, we have to stop all of this one-sidedness. And we, ought to, we also have to stop all of this enabling as well too. Because what ends up happening, I think a lot of Pan-Africanists who excuse the behaviors of those in the diaspora, especially who don't follow suit, what ends up happening is that you become somewhat of a simp. So it's almost kind of like being a man and you allow a woman to act however she wants to, whether she's disrespectful, uh, uh, unruly, or whatever the case may be, and you reward her regardless of it, or you try to cater to her, over cater to her. So it's kind of like simping except for people in a diaspora. You're basically saying, well, you know, but they're one of our brothers and sisters and we kind of got to just roll with it. So don't make fun of them. Don't say this. Don't say that. Don't oust them. Don't outcast them. Don't call them coons. Don't call them sambos. Don't say that they're tethering. Don't say that they need to go back to their homeland. Just accept them for who they are. Because essentially that's what you mean when you get upset with us, when we actually call out the people who are doing things that are detrimental to the unity that you claim you want to see. So my question to a lot of Pan-Africanists is, why do you believe these things? Why do you believe that these are the reasons why it's acceptable to browbeat your brothers and sisters who are foundational black Americans? And the last thing I want to say, last thing that I really want to make sure that we get very, very clear. Foundational black Americans are not a group. We are a culture. But that is part of the problem with assuming that we are miscellaneous Africans who don't know what part of Africa we come from. You assume that because we are literally taking ownership of our culture that we're a group. We can't just be honored as that culture. Anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. I know I'll have a lot more to come, but other than that, I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all's night, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.